Hello students, today we're going to look at chapter 3.1, Constant Rate of Change. Now we've talked a little bit about constant rate of change and, and finding it, but I want to make sure it's solidified because we're going to look at how to find constant rate of change in tables as well as in graphs. So let's do a quick review on tables to see if we have a constant rate of change. And then we're going to look at how we would find that on a graph. Okay, so here I have my table set up. And I'll give you a little uh, time to write it down as I talk slowly about it. In this table, it gives me the number of hours and number of bags of leaves that were raked during that number of hours by a group of people. So after two hours, they raked five bags of leaves. After three hours, eight bags. After five hours, 14. And after eight hours, they bagged 23 bags of leaves. So now let's look at see if this is kind of a constant rate of change as we go through. So remember when we're doing constant range, we're looking for the change in Y's and the change in X's. So I'm going to put out here on the side, how did I get from 5 to 8? I added 3. Okay. How did I get from 8 to 14? I added 6. And how did I get from 14 to 23? I added 9. Now, at first glance, you think, ooh, those aren't all the same. It may not be constant rate of change. But let's keep going because we can't tell just by looking at the X's and the, the Y's. So now let's go to the X's. From 2 to 3, I added 1. From 3 to 5, I added 2. And from 5 to 8, I added 3. So these are not the same and these are not the same. But let's see if it's the constant rate by putting my y's over my x's to see if I get the same ratio. So I have 3 over 1, and then I have 6 over 2, and then I have 9 over 3. Well, do they all equal each other? Well, what is 3 divided by 1? 3. And what is 6 divided by 2? Well, that's also 3. So those are equal. And what about 9 divided by 3? That's three. So those are also equal. So in this case, I actually do have a constant rate of change because they are all equal to three. So even though it doesn't look like the numbers are going all in the same order, some spaces are skipped in the table, but I still do have a constant rate of change. So yes, the constant rate of change equals three. Three is my constant rate of change. What does that mean? That means after every hour, they fill three bags. There's my constant rate of change. Now let's go over here to the second problem. The second problem is after how many days and how many problems that we have solved in class. These are made up numbers. They're not actual. We've actually solved more than this. So if I look at on the first day, we had 1,200 problems solved. On the second day, 3,000. And on the third day, 4,500 problems solved. So let's look and see if we have a constant rate of change. We're going to look at our Y's. How do I get from 1,200 to, to 3,000? I'm adding 1,800. OK? Well, how do I get from 3,000 to 4,500? I'm adding 1,500. Well, let's go over here to our x's. How do I get from 1 to 2? I added 1. How do I get from 2 to 3? I added 1. Well, if these numbers are the same, then for there to be a constant rate of change, the y change has to be the same. My x values are the same, but my y value change are not the same. So this is not a constant rate of change because 1800 over 1 does not equal 1500 over 1. So here's an example in red of a constant rate of change and here's an example in green of one that is not a constant rate of change. So for our next example we're going to look at a graph. And I have a graph here, and the scale for the x values is 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. You don't need to draw the graph 
you will need to write down the ordered pairs as soon as we find them. And then my Y scale is 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 140, all the way up, okay? Going by 20s here, by 10s here. I mean by 2s here. So let's look and see if there's a constant rate of change, and if there is, what is it? So the first thing we need to do is pick out some points on our graph. So I'm going to start with this top point up here, and this top point is uh, 0, 140. And this next point is 2, 120. No, that's 100. 2, 100. And this next point is 4, 60. And the last point is 6, 20. So now let's write those points in a table. We can create a table. So I have um, 0, 140, 2, 100. 4, 60, and 6, 20. So let's see, and this is my x, and that's my y. Let's see if we have a constant rate of change here or not. So let's start with our y values. How do I get from 140 to 100? I subtract 40, so that's a minus 40. What about from 160? Well, that's another minus 40. And what about from 60 to 20? That's another minus 40, okay? So let's try the other side. From 0 to 2, I add 2. From 2 to 4, I add 2. And from 4 to 6, I add 2. Is it a constant rate of change? Absolutely. My change in x are all the same. And my change in y's are all the same. So yes, the graph is a constant rate of change. And the constant rate of change equals negative 40 over 2 which equals negative 20 because remember to find our constant rate of change it's the change in y over the change in x y over x negative 40 over 2 divide those two and you get negative 20 for the constant rate of change okay here are your practice problems for tonight the instructions say, does the table represent a constant rate of change? If yes, what is the constant rate of change, or CRC? Number one, here's my table, 5, 6, 7, 8, 15, 18, 21, 25. Number two, minutes and gallons used, 2, 7, 4, 14, 6, 21, and 8, 28. See if they are a constant rate of change. If no, just put no. If yes, put yes, and then tell me what the constant rate of change is. Take a picture of your practice problems and submit them through Edmodo.